The Tuner GP is really a way for European car to kind of connect with our readers and, and our advertisers and, and all these cars we feature from, you know, shop builds and different parts. We kind of want to bring together the best of the best, you know, in, in what our content is about. Um, and just put them through a test, you know, instead of just a zero to 60 time or a skid pad, like this is kind of a brutal three day, you know, run what you brung and there's really no downtime to fix anything. It's just show up, race and, and try to beat, you know, beat everyone. We basically invite North American tuners to show us what they can do and, and we have it over three days. We do a dyno day, a drag strip day and a road course day. The idea being that we're going to see how much power can these guys make, how much traction can they get and how balanced are these cars on the track. So we're really trying to see the, the tuners craft in, in action. I think I was probably uh, I was 12 years old and my mom knew a guy that uh, raced a really sweet 911 Porsche at Lime Rock. And I went to his first race and he took me on a, on a hot lap during testing. And I mean, just the feeling of your face being kind of smushed into the back of the seat and uh, the noise and, and grip, it was crazy. So um, I think I was just in love with adrenaline and, and combustion. I've wanted an E46 forever and they're finally affordable. So I had just moved out here from New York uh, a little over a year ago. I found uh, a perfect, pristine 2003 M3. <laughs> Bought it, planned to keep it stock, moved out here, and uh, I guess it's been a little over a year and $32,000 uh, in parts invested into a $21,000 car. So it's been a long road, but um, once I realized we were doing the GP again, I kind of thought it would be awesome to, to put in our own car. I mean, this was a huge project for European car. We put it on the cover and we've done a bunch of issues with it. Um, so I kind of wanted to compete on my own against all these guys who have Maybe not, maybe not the same you know, leeway in getting parts, but they have shops, they work on them all day. And uh, I mean, I'm just a regular dude who works at a magazine, so I kind of wanted to see what it would be like to stack up against them. I mean, in a Tuner GP, your, your biggest advantage is, is bringing a car that is well sorted and, and is not gonna break. Um, but, you know, finding, finding the balance between having a ton of horsepower a ton of traction and then really you know supreme reliability is what will take the event for you um, and I mean it's, it's three days and generally it's pretty hot out in the desert we run at Streets of Willow um, I mean you got to survive this year we had everything from Volkswagen GTI up to C63 AMG we also had a number of uh, BMW M3s, Z4Ms um, we, we, uh, we actually had a couple of our SEMA project cars, so we had a Ford Focus ST which we saw the count as being European because uh, essentially it was sort of devised there um, and our E63, E46 M3 uh, that participated as well. The range of cars at, at the Tuner GP is really like it's something else and I mean all of them they're each something you kind of are dying to just go drive either on the track or on the street because they're all pretty unique in their own way. Um, I mean, especially the Guido 34 with their, you know, I think it's a 2012 TTRS. I mean, you look at this thing, it has stock wheels, stock brakes, kind of a beefy exhaust note, but you don't really think twice about it. Pop the hood and I mean they have a massive uh, inlet on this huge APR stage 3 turbo thing makes 660 wheel horsepower and it has traction so you know you're pretty excited but then all the way down to the guys at BBI Autosport with their uh, their Porsche I mean this is an old 80s 911 that is here competing against the newest technology with cars five times as powerful um, it's insane but that car happened to be while well, it might have been the slowest definitely the most attractive and uh, one of the best sounding. And then down to, you know, a standard uh, B8 S4 on air suspension. I mean, that's a car you kind of want to drive every day, but it sounded mean as hell. It was really fast and uh, kind of had better functionality than everyone else, so. 
The dyno, we went over to a Church Automotive, um, and instead of uh, a roller dyno, they use a hub dyno, which is you know more accurate, um, especially for kind of a purpose like this, because some high horsepower cars will start slipping and factor in drivetrain loss and all of this, but a hub dyno is really, really close to accurate measurement. And um, the dyno is really the start of it all. Like These guys will show up and they will run their most aggressive tuning setup. You know, For me, I, I ran as much boost as I could safely. Um, and you know, the guys from Platform, uh, they were having some unlucky troubles uh, on the dyno, and you know they lost that event. Granted, they should have they should have been pretty competitive there. Um, but you have guys really trying to maximize you know the numbers that they put out. So from spraying nitrous onto their intercooler, running water mess, or just you know getting right to the point where you might blow up. That's that's what you're going to see on the dyno. The advantage here, especially in the drag race, is you're running on street tires. If you have a lot of horsepower, you want all-wheel drive. I mean, that's the only way you're getting this power to the ground. You're running street tires, and now it, it kind of acts like you have slicks. For a guy like me, I, you know, with 650 wheel to 275 street tires in the back, I'm kind of screwed until you know midway through third gear. Um, so a lot of the launching techniques come into play. Um, and you can really generalize, you know, the faster cars by seeing their trap speed versus their overall speed, especially in a thousand feet. I mean, most of the guys, uh, similar class with me, you know, were the Z4 guys. We're running really similar times, but they were able to get off the line a little smoother with, with less power. Um, but they were trapping 107, 105 miles an hour where I was at 115. <laughs> Honestly, it was pretty, it was pretty surreal uh, showing up to the Tuner GP with my own car. Um, a lot of these guys, they can go back to a shop and fix it, and this is their, you know, it's their workhorse, their shop car, but this is my daily driver, and uh, I mean, it's my rolling savings account. So after I put down some kind of epic numbers on the dyno, I'm like, thank God I didn't blow that up, um, but I still have to kind of do well in the drag race and then get on a road course, you know, driving 135 miles an hour down a straight into a massive turn praying that my brakes work and these tires hold up. It was sketchy, but you know, once you get in there and start smelling race gas and really being competitive, uh, I really didn't give a shit about my car. I was, I was down to crash it or blow it up and it's all for the fun, so. I think uh, the future for the European Car GP, um, I mean, it's definitely pretty bright. We, we're getting more entrants every year and uh, I'd like to see a field of 30. And while it's nice to have some of the best tuner shops out there, I welcome more, but I think more of the homebrew stuff and, and guys like me is really what I want to see. I want to see someone who thinks that they've built something crazy and phenomenal, phenomenal uh, and just show up and kind of kill it. So I really want to open up the doors to everybody. Um, as far as competition, I like the dyno, I like the drag race, but I, you know, we're definitely going to push to do a proper quarter mile next year. And I think Streets of Will is a great place for, for this test. I definitely don't want to see anything about fuel economy. I, could not care any less about saving gasoline, and that's not what racing's about. So I want to see, maybe we'll have a competition for who has the worst fuel mileage.